For decades, baseball lived and died by the sun. It was a pastoral game, illuminated by the warm glow of a bright afternoon. And when the sun set, a dark quiet blanketed baseball diamonds all over the country. The vibrancy of the game put to rest for the night, waiting for a new dawn and the next day's cry of play ball. That's the way it was, until a man named Larry McPhail said otherwise. When you talk night baseball, Larry McPhail has to be a, a name that comes first and foremost to mind. In 1935, Larry McPhail was the general manager of the Cincinnati Reds, a bombastic but determined figure with an idea that most other baseball executives considered to be a giant risk playing baseball at night under bright artificial lights? A lot of people back then thought that it would take something away from this, this game that we knew growing up from there, growing up from the 1800s, this, this lovely pastoral, outdoor, sunshiny game. But because baseball is such a tradition-bound sport, you had that pushback and that resistance. But McPhail was headstrong. Of course, he didn't just want night baseball for the sake of breaking tradition. This was a business opportunity. Absolutely, anything to draw people in the park. Attendance fell off the, the, the face of the earth in a lot of parks during the 30s because of the Depression. Night games were really a way to try to create some excitement and, you know, here's a big event and let's go out for the night. We'll go out to a ball game. So it was on May 24th, 1935, Cincinnati's Crosley Field was splashed with a flood of lights. The Reds took the field, and the Philadelphia Phillies stepped up to the plate to begin the first night game in Major League Baseball. 25,000 fans filled the seats. McPhail's gamble paid off. Teams throughout the league took notice, saw that there was money to be made, and that there was significant interest among the public. But the adoption of night baseball would be gradual. Many ball clubs were slow to catch on, and none were slower than the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs almost had lights in 1942. All of the, uh, the equipment was there in the winter of 1941-42, but Pearl Harbor came along, and the owner of the Cubs, P.K. Wrigley, donated the lights and all of the equipment to, to the war effort. And after the war, he kind of procrastinated on that. And there was still the possibility after the war that the Cubs would install lights. But P.K. Wrigley kind of thought, you know what, we're unique here. And uh, maybe a, a guy and his family would like to come out in, in the sunshine and, and enjoy baseball at beautiful Wrigley Field. So after a while, it just got to be a tradition that didn't want to go away. It's a tradition that would last until 1988. When the lights were finally switched on for Major League Baseball's final holdout. Over the years, night baseball has attached itself to the romanticism of the game. A core experience, not just for the players, but for the fans as well. If you look out to the west, you see a beautiful sunset. The lights start to take effect in the middle of the ball game. You're sitting there with your beer and maybe that you see the moonrise coming up over right field. No longer a game that abides by the sun. A game that belongs as much to the night as it does to the day. <laughs>